Everyone knows Africa is about 14 times bigger than Greenland, but it often looks very different on world maps. So let's add a world map to QGIS, go down to the coordinate box, delete the text that's in there and type world in lowercase letters, and then you wanna hit enter. We'll get a world map and we can see that if we go to the bottom right of QGIS, there's an EPSG button and it says 4326. And that's the code for a particular co coordinate reference system. So I'll click that button and it'll bring up the CRS section. And 4326 is this WGS84 coordinate reference system. If I just move this over a bit, I, you can see a couple I've used before, which I'll remove from the recently used box. If I type in 3857, that is this pseudo Mercator coordinate reference system. And if I click OK, that's the more extreme view that you'll see sometimes of the size of Greenland. But this is not accurate. And sometimes when we're producing maps, say, of Greenland, we wouldn't want to use a coordinate reference system like this. So there's different ways of dealing with this in QGIS using different coordinate reference systems. But if we just go down to the bottom right and click on that button, we can change the coordinate reference system that way. You will see it in the project properties CRS uh, view. That's another way to go to the same thing. So project properties CRS is exactly the same as just clicking on the button in the bottom right. That's why I do it. It's just one click. So here I want to have a map that shows Greenland and I don't want this such a dramatic difference in size. So if I type in North Pole, what I'll get there is a list of all the projections or coordinate reference systems with North Pole in the name. Now, in this case, I know I want to choose North Pole orthographic just to show you what it looks like. I'll click on OK. And then we get a view of the world from above. So this could be an example of a much more appropriate coordinate reference system if we're mapping Greenland. If we wanted to rotate things a little, I could change the rotation value. You know, I could put uh, Greenland in the center if I wanted to, or I can go back to the default. So that's one option. I do it again. I can type in North Pole again. So that was the orthographic view we could choose North Pole Stereographic. So note the one I've got at the moment, it shows the world as if we're looking at it from above. North Pole Stereographic, I go to the full view, and zoom out a little bit, you'll see it does show more of the world. You might feel you can't zoom out, but it includes the whole world, but it totally distorts things that are further away. So yeah, maybe this is okay for a close-up view, but you might find sometimes when you do this, you can't really zoom in and out and things weird things happen. So obviously I wouldn't use that one. Let's try North Pole again. So we've got North Pole stereographic. We've also got one for the moon and Mars, but we're not going to use those. Let's try uh, mnemonic, North Pole mnemonic. Let's try what this does. I don't think I've ever used that one before. Okay, it might slightly freak out. Yeah, there you go. Sometimes you have to hit zoom full but you can see you get great distortion there the further you are away but if I zoom in we can see uh, it just looks a bit weird but in this case I might use North Pole orthographic and once I've used a coordinate reference system it will be in this box because it says recently used coordinate reference systems so these are the recent ones so I'll get rid of that mnemonic one I'll get rid of the stereographic one and I'll click apply and I'll click OK you will have coordinate reference systems that are specific to different countries and different regions. So if I go back to the button and type in Greenland, we can see all the different ones for different zones in Greenland. Uh, there's also a stereographic one for Greenland. If I hit OK on this, you'll see what happens. If this doesn't do this automatically for you, you might need to click on the zoom to layer button. And when we're dealing with coordinate reference systems, QGIS sometimes can freak out a little bit and take some time to react. That's often just to do with the complex mathematical geometry behind coordinate reference systems. So don't worry if that happens. Okay, 
I'll click the button again, we'll go back to North Pole Orthographic, we'll click OK and I'll, I'll zoom to the full extent. So that's the kind of view of the world that might be much more useful if you're focusing on Greenland. If you want to see the whole world and have things much more equal area, then if you go back to the CRS section, if I type an equal area here, you will see lots of equal area projections for different parts of the world. Um, under equal area cylindrical, you'll see world cylindrical equal area. So if I click apply on that, you do get that kind of map, but obviously you get a lot of distortion. That's the um, downside to this. If I choose sphere cylindrical equal area and click apply, Again, it's just slightly different, more distortion towards the poles, which is obviously not great for Greenland. So the key thing here really is just to know where the projections are, to know which ones might be appropriate when you are mapping different parts of the world and to be able to find them. The last one, if you just type in space into the filter box, you've got one called the world from space, which makes it look like a sphere. If I click OK you will get something that looks like that. It does sometimes lead to artifacts and strange things like towards the top of the globe here, but that can also be a good option. So that's just a little review of different coordinate reference systems you might want to use, where to find them, and particularly, for example, if you were mapping Greenland.